Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel. Did you guys miss me? I hope you did because I most certainly missed you and missed playing Planet Zoo, but hey, I am back. It's been a while since I have uploaded my last episode with an Asian small clothed otter, but hey, today I am back and I am back with a very exciting episode because today we'll add not one, but two new animals to our zoo. Of course, I am talking here about your beloved Elm Hill City Zoo and the two animals that I will be adding today and I'll be adding them to one enclosure are the new capybara from the wetlands animal pack and the bird tapir from the base game. And of course, we are continuing the work on the wetlands house that I decided to add to the zoo when the wetlands animal pack was announced. Uh, this is basically the last enclosure that we are adding to this house. Uh, but don't worry, the other animals from the wetlands pack will be added here as well. So basically, if I remember it right, if I'm correct, this is our first mixed habitat, like mixed species habitats in the zoo. We have never done that. Uh, but when I did the uh, showcase of all the animals added to uh, Planet Zoo with a new pack, uh, I was able to do it because of an early access. And I found out in the Zoopedia uh, where the species enrichment uh, tab is that capybara can actually and gets enriched uh, by living with so many different species. And one of them was the tapir and where I right away thought that it would be so cool to have them mixed together in one habitat because I remember that I saw many of those uh, on the internet or uh, in the zoos that I've been that the capybara are often kept together with the tapirs there, bear tapirs or lowland tapirs and so on. And I thought that it could be so, so cool to mix them together because I think that they actually like match, they look good together in one habitat. So why not do it? And because of that, we will be able to add like an additional animal to this wetlands pack being the bird's tapir. Uh, I actually told you guys uh, some episodes ago that in this house, there will be one animal from the base game and some of you actually guessed that this will be a tapir uh, so yeah I am super excited because I love tapirs I love them in real life I think that they're such an interesting like very cool looking animal and of course I love the capybara if you saw seen my uh, like species showcase uh, video with the, all the new animals you know that this is probably my favorite on one or one of my favorites added to the game so yeah I really love this uh, enclosure I had some problems with it to be honest I didn't know how to start it what to do but in the end I love how it has turned out like this was really uh, the thing when you have to trust the process of building uh, because at the beginning I didn't know the direction that I wanted to go like I knew the shape and so on but I didn't know what I want to do inside of the enclosure because all of the enclosures for the capybaras and tapirs that I saw uh, on the internet when I was looking for inspiration were very plain and boring and not many plants not many decorations and stuff uh, this is because the capybaras and tapirs are herbivores so they eat those plants basically uh, but still I couldn't help myself I had to add some plants in here so in the end you'll see uh, a lot of plants maybe not as I would didn't go as crazy as I sometimes go with the planting uh, but still we have a lot of plants and I also wanted to give them a lot of trees because I saw uh, on those enclosures that they often have a lot of trees and they love to lay in the shadows that's why the, you'll see a lot of uh, different trees inside of in the of this habitat 
So this habitat will of course have two sections, the indoor section and the outdoor section. Uh, the indoor section will be a bit bigger than the one that we've built for the otters last time. Of course the otters are tiny and here we are dealing with big animals like tapirs, maybe capybaras are not huge but they are living with tapirs so I have to like keep it in mind. Uh, the outside area will be sort of like an island or something like uh, surrounded by a moat uh, at first I wanted to do a view, uh, underwater viewing gallery in here and this is what I have been struggling with uh, so much because I was so focused on having this underwater viewing gallery and I didn't know how to incorporate that like I had to do this like very deep ditch to nail it like uh, it looked really really like not not it just uh, and I wasn't like really satisfied with it so uh, in the end after so many trials and so much wasted time I decided to like skip this idea completely and just do a moat and in the end I am really happy that I actually did it because uh, thanks to that this habitat is so much different from the otters one that have this large uh, underwater viewing gallery and also looking at uh, the habitats of capybara and uh, the tapirs around the world not many of them actually have the underwater viewing galleries there are only some like several that have them for the capybaras I don't think I saw any for the tapirs so this somehow looks more realistic than having like this you know forest uh, underwater viewing gallery just to have it uh, thanks to that I think you know that the habitat looks really cool really like generic and realistic and i am really really happy with how it has turned out again as i always say uh i always say that i am very happy with my habitats but this is true actually i am so why not say that out loud so let's quickly go through all the things that I already done here that you could see me doing. So as I told you guys, I did like this island with a moat around. Uh, I used the fence that we uh, created for the otters last time. So if you want to go and see how I did it, uh, definitely watch the otter habitat. I will link it down in the description and on the screen because I will be using some parts of this habitat just to be cohesive, you know, this a whole house was built at one time so it makes sense to use the same you know uh, fences same same architectural like style and stuff uh, because they were basically built at the same time uh, so yeah I used this fence this time with a moat I didn't you know include creating the whole fence around the moat because uh, this was a lot of adjusting, you know, different angles and stuff, so I skipped that. I also added those, like, planters that you can see right now in the water. They are for the plants that will be growing in there. Oh my god, that was so, like, groundbreaking. The planters for the plants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there will be plants growing there. Uh, and the reason for those planters is to like break the view in some areas to the habitat to make it like look more like cozy and like to mark those you know spots where the guests can look inside of the habitat so the animals are not like you know surrounded by the guests if it makes any sense. But yeah, that's what that was my idea. And in the end, I really like how. How it is looking. I also used the rock walls that we did last time for the otters. Uh, also, I wanted those habitats to be a bit cohesive, that's why I decided to use them as well. You will also see them in the inside part of the habitat. Uh, but yeah, this is just to have like a pretty background for the habitat, uh, not to have like this plain wall of the building. And yeah, I really love those uh, walls and I am so into them lately. I will be using them for sure for a lot of my habitats in the future. 
Right now, as you guys can see, I am doing my usual work, which is adding tons of small rocks, some broken trees, and also uh, a lot of small plants and plants that we are usually adding. As I told you guys, I didn't want to go crazy with the plants this time because they would simply be eaten by the animals, but still, I added quite a lot of them. Uh, and yeah, I really like how, you know, like dense this habitat is looking at the end. Uh, really it looks so so cool with animals like exploring this habitat so uh, yeah really happy with the plant work inside of it you guys ask me all of the time how I am able to do those habitats look so pretty so nice and so on uh, I don't know <laughs> this is just what I do but I sometimes try to share with you guys some tips on how you can make your habitats look a bit better and my tip for today uh, is to uh, always build and decorate the habitat add all the details like stones trees and so on from the path and the guest perspective as you guys can see, I always try to position the camera uh, like above the path or near the path and I build from there. Uh, I, thanks to that, I am able to see what the guests will actually see. I am able to get like the perspective for things. I am able to do those more visible like uh, places for the guests look like more pretty like I am always focusing on the, those places and I am kind of you know skipping the parts that the guests don't see uh, so yeah that's one of my tips because you know that really really matters and it doesn't make sense you know to focus on the areas you know in the back that the guests won't see anyway here I am focusing more on the like central part of the island and the banks of this like moat uh, so yeah this is just my tip uh, and of course I'll be sharing it with you more in the future episodes. So uh, when the whole outdoor area of this habitat will be finished I will add some enrichment items to it and also I will add those LED cups to the new like this uh, spring enrichment for the capybaras to uh, make those you know bamboo sticks look a bit more like realistic when they are coming out of the walls and in the end I really like this detail and then I will focus a bit on the paths around and I will also add like this viewing platform using the structure that we uh, built for the otters i will like alter the shape of it to be more curved like following the uh, fence that we've built uh, i really like this detail i think it is so realistic to add like those you know shading structures for the guests if it's too hot if the sun is too like harsh they can always hide there if it's for example raining they can always go in there so yeah i really like this detail and also i will add the paths i won't show you guys uh doing all the path work i mean adding like those plaster pieces to cover the path and adding some decorations around the habitat you will be able to see that in the cinematic shots by the end of this video uh, i won't do it as detailed as uh, i did for the otters last time because simply i don't have like an exact idea what i want to do it here because i will have some other paths coming from there to the other section of the zoo uh, but we will figure it out in the future episodes next time so keep that in mind if you will think that it looks a bit you know plain around this habitat in the cinematic shots after being done with that I will move on to the indoor section but before I will talk more about it let me tell you guys a bit about the plans for the future of this series and about like a scheduling why I am not uploading as regularly as before uh, so, uh, maybe let's start with the scheduling. Uh, there is quite a lot of stuff going on right now in my life. There is also a nice weather outside. There are friends that want to meet me. Uh, in my country, all the restrictions are down right now basically so I am quite busy with my life recently I am not spending so much time uh, like 
by my computer in my office so uh, that's why like I haven't uploaded so much recently I also had um, some plans over last weekend I also have some plans uh, on the next weekend when where I will be going to Berlin and I will also be visiting the Berlin Zoo and I am super excited about that but because of that of course I am not able to record as many videos as uh, I was able to uh, like recently uh, I'm sure that I will go back to like my regular scheduling at some point but right now I am sort of more focusing on my private life so I hope you guys will understand that this is not like a burnout or something like that I know that many content creators like experience that lately and to be honest I cannot blame them I think that everyone should do what is best for them I also experienced something like that like several months ago uh, but yeah you should put yourself first so uh, I understand them completely Lee for example was like uploading so so many videos that I actually admired him so much because I couldn't like think of how he could do it like upload daily build so many things like detailed things and upload videos daily for me it's not like doable at all uh, so yeah no wonder he he's experiencing some kind of burnout or he's just tired but actually this is not the case for me I am not tired I am really fine and uh, I love recording those videos still I have so much fun uh, and uh, of course there there are new series on the channel we have the prehistoric kingdom right now so I am also focusing on that and I hope you guys will understand the planet zoo fans I am talking to you because I love the prehistoric kingdom so much uh, that I want to you know upload some videos from it uh, on the you know following weeks uh, but I won't rem uh, like forget about Planet Zoo for sure because it is still my favorite 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 game and what we'll do actually in the future of this series and other series in Planet Zoo is uh, we will focus on finishing the wetlands house so right now we have the capybara and the tapir in the next episode we will have like finishing the wetlands house sort of episode so there will be no animals we will just build and finish this house and I will probably give you guys a tour around it. Uh, next we will build uh, some habitats for the animals from the wetland section that I have planned here. So it will be a flamingo, a wild water buffalo and the Nile Letchway. And then uh, after finishing all that we will go back to the uh, wildcat house. And I will try to finish it and then we'll move on to something completely different which will probably be a reptile house for the zoo and I am really excited about this project as well. Of course the uh, desert adventure park will probably be back at some point. I think that after you know uh, we're finishing the wetland section I will go back to this uh, park because I also have some really like Mm, exciting things planned for that uh, we have for example animals that have more you know like claws and teeth and also that are li really large I won't say anything more <laughs> planned for this series so uh, I hope you guys will be excited for that of course we are all also playing prehistoric kingdom so I have plans for adding all of the animals or dinosaurs and stuff like that that is that are available in the early access of this game and also we need to finish our uh, Jurassic World Evolution 2 series uh, still some uh, episodes to go I am so 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 enjoying the park that I am building and if you are guy if you guys are not watching this series you are missing out I can tell you already uh, the final tour is like upon us so <laughs> I hope you guys will enjoy it as well okay so this is basically what what is going on I am fine everything is fine I am just a bit more busy than usual that's why the uploads are not as uh, consistent as they used to be but we'll go back to it at some point uh, for sure 
Okay, so when it comes to the intersection of our tapir and capybara habitat, we of course used, as I told you guys, the rock walls that we did last time. We also added like those planters from the really small uh, fall rocks. Those animals being the herbivores would probably destroy those plants. That's why, you know, adding them in like sort of elevated pl uh, planters actually makes sense because they cannot access them. I added here also some dead trees for some variation. Uh, I wanted this intersection to look a bit different from the one for the uh, for the otters. I also used the uh, tree bark path. I love using it in the intersections. I think it looks so so realistic because you often see uh, like tree bark used uh, in those sections because it is easy to clean. You can always replace that, and yeah, it looks so so cool. I will be using here out of those elephant ear plants because I saw uh, some habitats, uh, tapir habitats basically, uh, that had those plants and the tapirs didn't eat them, maybe they don't like them or something. So I decided to use that. Of course, there will be some plants that will be uh, like accessible for uh, those animals, but I couldn't help myself. I didn't want to make it, you know, so plain and without any greenery. Uh, that's why some plants actually will be on the ground. And I sort of imagine that those are the plants that those those animals simply don't eat. <laughs> I will also of course add a lot of uh, small rocks from some detailing. I will add a lot of creeping plants on those uh, you know rock walls uh, using for example the Brazil nut uh, tree sapling which I love to use for the clip creeping plants and I will also add like those uh, duckweeds on the water section that I always use those leaves that were added to the game with the Euro pack. Uh, I always like to you know add them at the water surface so they look like some algae or some duckweed or something like that and I really like the look of it. This habitat will of course also have a backstage section but I didn't include that in the speed build section of the video. You will see it in the cinematic shots by the end of this video like the tapirs and the capybaras will have their own separate uh, backstage sections so uh, that looks really really cool. I sort of forgot to add that this intersection is uh, like sort of lower into the ground than the intersection for the otters. Uh, this is because uh, those animals are simply large and big, so uh, we uh, need to uh, be sure that they won't be able to, you know, escape their habitats, that they, it will be safe for the guests. Uh, of course, I also added the uh, fences here that I used and I created last time to make it all look cohesive and nice. We will still do some adjustments, some, you know, detailing in this house in the future episodes, so that that's why maybe you know the area around this intersection looks a bit plain. You could also have like a little sneak peek of the restaurant that we'll be adding here. This is the first time that I'll be using the restaurant from the Euro Pack, so I am really excited for it. Uh, we'll have some tables and stuff, but you'll see it all in the next episode. Okay, so the speed build section of this video is slowly coming to the end and I still haven't told you guys any of the fun facts about the capybaras or the uh, tap tapirs that we are adding today. Uh, so the capybaras is the largest rodent on earth, if you didn't know that, this is a very known fact about the capybaras. The capybaras are excellent swimmers, uh, they have partially webbed feet. To make up for constant wear and tear of eating tough aquatic plants and grasses, their teeth will just keep on growing. Like la rabbits, their high crowned narrow edged teeth are perfectly adapted for cutting up their food, but without eating tough plant material, they will continue to grow and eventually they'll be too long. Okay, we'll go back to the tapirs in the next episode, so uh, the fun facts for them will be next time. 
Okay guys, this is all that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please consider to subscribe to my channel, click the subscribe button down below. Thanks to that, you won't miss any of my future uploads and you will help my little channel to grow. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a big thumbs up down below, ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video, and of course comment down below uh, if you like today's build, if you like today's habitats, and what do you think about the animals that I decided to add to the wetlands house. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys! Oh,